Well, I'm interested in sound that we don't usually um, pay attention to, um, that um, maybe hiding or secret or, or just um, lying somewhere else or living somewhere else um, uh, its own life somehow. And I'm interested in, in um, paying attention to that. You know, I'm constantly uh, looking for sound or trying to find sound uh, that hides and, and then finding out, wow, the ear that I'm using all the time actually could I reverse my hearing or, or listen to myself, to my own hearing organ? That would be like a paradox in a way. And um, so I, um, I found a, a scientist in uh, Copenhagen, Torsten Dow, um, who uh, claimed to... What's wrong here? Hello? Who could uh, record uh, my, my ears. So uh, uh, heavily intoxicated as well, I was... <laughs> <laughs> put to sleep <laughs> and to um, had my ears recorded and um, I didn't have much uh, spontaneous emissions actually um, but um, what, what is uh, possible is to you can uh, evoke those tones um, and that's what they also use uh, to do to, to measure hearing on, on babies for example if I'm right to, to play in two tones into the uh, cochlea with a, a little tube and these two tones have to have a certain ratio, 1 to 1.2. And uh, this, if this interval is played into a healthy ear, the uh, hair cells will respond with a, a lower tone, which can be predicted. Um, you can simply make the calculation, say, if you play that 1,000 hertz in, and then 1 to 1.2 would be 1,200 something, then you would have a precise, you would, a slightly lower tone that could be predicted uh, in a healthy ear. That's, that's the difference, that's called a difference tone. Yeah, it could, yeah kind of a difference tone. But, um, because first of all, when I tried to have my ears recorded, there was not much sound, and I didn't hear much uh, either. I, c I couldn't hear any, any, my own tone or anything. Uh, and as far as I am um, informed, that not, not many people can hear their own tones, which makes perfectly sense. I mean, it's a paradox, and Pythagoras, and uh, who can hear the sound of cosmos, and, uh, you've always heard it, I, I don't know, but if um, when I, then I had to have my ears uh, evoked, my ear tones evoked, so I had these two tones played into my ear. Um, and that's when I sat there and discovered that uh, I could hear three tones. So I couldn't only hear the two tones that were played into my ear, but I could also hear my own ear mm -hmm. playing. Well now, t tonight we're not about to stick two tubes into everybody's ears, but We'll do the next best thing, uh, which is to play some of this piece, which you, you call Labyrinthitis. Yes. Uh, there was a piece that I made uh, uh, for this uh, conference, and um, it was based on this principle of the ear, how it evokes tones. Um, and uh, what I did was to, um, to uh, what you're going to hear, are, are like uh, the sound file you, you heard before, but just my ear tones um, that uh, I used in the same way as uh, the way that was used to, to um, uh, evoke my ear tones with the sine waves, the synthetic sine waves. Instead, I, I took the recordings of my ears that I like, totally um, filtered so that I had these tones from my own ear and uh, tuned them into that uh, interval, 1 to 1.2. And then so that when you hear these two tones of my ear, they should then evoke a tone in your ears. So you'll hear two tones from us, and your ear, providing it's healthy, should add a third tone to it. Yeah. So since I know what tone that is that uh, should be occurring in your ear, um, once that is occurring in your ear, that fades in for real, like out of the loudspeakers, and uh, replaces uh, those two tones that were used to generate that tone in your ear. And now I have this slightly deeper tone that is not generated in your ear anymore because that tone was made by the previous two tones, and then I have this lower tone out of the speakers, and uh, I add another uh, frequency that is also 1 to 1.2, and fade th those in, and then those two tones generate then, uh, or like trigger uh, another lower tone in your ears that I then use again and again. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, an ascending uh, uh, composition that I then yeah. And sort of playing with the uh, illusion idea that we were talking about before as well. The, the 
you create the sound in our ear, and then you actually give us the sound and change it to yes, something else. Yes, because I, I would like to question this thing about what, what is actually in ourselves, what is, what is outside, and the paradox of hearing yourself hearing, because you only hear that tone when you hear. So, All right, well, why don't we, uh, let, let's hear some of it and, yeah. and see what so happens. It, let's see, what, you can also move the head and um, back and forth, uh, um, and uh, try to listen to your own ear. Um, Let's play it first. Did you hear anything? <laughs> yes. <laughs>